Good morning, everyone. Welcome to a new module of this online neonatal nursing training. This this one comes from the team of neonatology at Aston Mims Calicut. My I am Dr. Preeta, and my team comprises of Dr. Anand, Dr. Divya, Dr. Vishnu Mohan, and my head nurse, Mrs. Deepa. The module we are going to be dealing with in the next few days is thermoregulation in newborn. Without much more ado, let us get on with the module proper. Thermoregulation will be dealt with in three sections. Loosely, into th I am dividing the topic into three sections. Section one would be fact files. Here we will deal with the nitty gritties of the minimum information you and I should have before we are capable of enabling our newborns to thermoregulate themselves. So this will include the what, the why, the when and the how. Section 2 will be theory to practice. So whatever we have attempted to learn in the first section will be put to practice in the second section. So here we will tell us, we will sort of discuss how we do something, when do we need to do and what is it that we do. And this will be more practical. And finally, we have this miscellaneous section where there are so many points that you and I should remember. So that they will be clubbed together as points to remember, something like a take home message you might say. So moving on to section 1. The fact files. Fact one would be what is this thermoregulation? Thermoregulation is in essence the ability of a person, here a newborn, to maintain a normal body temperature in varying environmental conditions and temperatures. So then what is normal? When you talk about normal temperature for a newborn, we are talking about 36 to 36.5 degrees centigrade in the skin whereas our core temperature we are looking at is around 36.5 to 37.5 degrees. Finally, remember that our axillary temperature generally tends to range about half degree lesser than our rectal temperature. So you might find that the skin temperature and the axillary temperature tend to go hand in hand. Remember that at birth a neonate is dealing with an abrupt transition from this nice and warm 37 degrees centigrade in the womb the baby is actually pushed out into a hostile environment of 25 degrees centigrade so this is the rapid abrupt transition that the newborn is having to deal with now thermoregulation therefore is in essence a balance between heat loss and heat production so why is this thermoregulation so important? Hypothermia has been, ev there is sufficient evidence to show that hypothermia is an independent risk factor for neonatal mortality. And there is a definite relationship between hypothermia and neonatal morbidity as well. A baby can lose up to 0.1 to 0.2 degrees centigrade every minute after birth. And if this baby is wet as well, this loss can be up to 200 kilocalories per kg per minute, especially in a preterm. And this might surprise you, but this is a fact. A naked newborn at 23 degrees centigrade suffers the same degree of cold stress as a naked adult will at 0 degrees centigrade. So the stress we will feel at 0 degree centigrade is what a baby will feel at 22, 23 degree centigrade. Again, even a transient hypothermia has an impact in a newborn. The hypothermia at admission, at the time of admission into NICU has been shown to increase morbidity again as an independent risk factor. And details of Statistics available in India show a case fatality rate of 39% in even mild hypothermia 
and up to 82% in severe hypothermia. The global rate ranges from 8.5 to 52%. So this, I hope, will put uh, stress to the fact why we are dealing with this topic at all. So then, what is hypothermia and what is hyperthermia? Remember, we are regulating the temperature. Hypothermia can be classified, as we all do, into mild, moderate and severe. Mild is otherwise known as cold stress and it ranges from 36 to 36.4 degrees centigrade. Moderate is 32 to 35.9 degrees centigrade and severe is less than 32 degrees centigrade. Whereas hyperthermia is any temperature about 37.5 degrees centigrade. If the temperature is allowed to cross 42 degrees centigrade, neurological impairment is an absolute expectation. So, if you look at the body temperature, normal would be 36.5 to 37.5. Cold stress or mild hypo will be between 36 and 36.5. Moderate hypothermia is between 32 and 36. And severe is below 32. So then, as I told earlier, this is in essence a balance between heat lost and heat produced. So let us look at how or what are the ways in which a baby loses heat. Evaporation. We all know what evaporation is and we also know that at birth the baby's skin is wet. So trans epidermal water loss is the biggest villain at the time of birth. 0.58 kilocalories per every ml of water evaporated. This is the magnitude of the heat loss. So much so that within 15 minutes a baby can lose up to 2 degree of core temperature. Radiation. We all know what radiation is. Radiation is the loss of heat to the nearest cold surface as infrared electromagnetic waves. That is to say the baby loses its temperature or loses its heat to the cold walls. So this loss obviously is proportional to the temperature difference between the baby and the cold wall. And remember the maximum loss is in the baby's head. Convection. Convection is where air, the movement of air, air currents is what causes the loss of heat. Again the temperature difference does make a difference, make a matter does matter. So open doors, open windows, a violently moving fan or the blast coming from an air conditioning unit in an OT, these are all examples of cold draughts that can actually cause the baby to lose heat by convection. And finally by conduction. Conduction is when the baby comes into contact with a cold surface, baby loses its heat to the surface. Thus cold linen or a cold weighing scale is all that is needed for this. So then we know now how the baby loses heat. Now how can a baby produce heat? Baby produces heat by the first mechanism the body or the first defense, first line of defense would be peripheral vasoconstriction. The blood vessels of the baby's limbs or the skin, they actually constrict. Second would be behavioral and postural changes. That is to say, when the baby becomes aware, that is a cortical consciousness of coldness or the loss of heat, that I am feeling cold, I am getting cold. When that cortical consciousness occurs, baby manifests some behavioral changes and postural changes. The behavioral changes will be something from baby will become irritable, baby will start sort of fidgeting about and the postural changes a baby will try to flex. We all remember these things where a mother, instinctively a mother will realize that the baby is moving around in the cot. She will get up and arrange the blanket better and the baby will go back to sleep. So this is because of the cortical consciousness. And the most important thing here, which is very specific for a newborn baby, is this non-shivering thermogenesis. A newborn cannot shiver. So nature has provided the newborn with a non-shivering mechanism of thermogenesis via the brown fat. So what is this brown fat? Brown fat is a richly vascularized and sympathetically innervated fat. Remember these two key metaphors here, richly vascularized and sympathetically innervated. 
This fat is seen in the interscapular areas surrounding the major or in abdominal organs and surrounding aorta and the other blood vessels. And it is found that from non-shivering thermogenesis, a newborn can actually double its resting heat production with no increase in its activity whatsoever. So this is actually the crux of heat production in a newborn. Now how does this happen? In this very simplified slide, I will try to explain what happens. When a baby feels, the, feels cold or when the body temperature drops, there is a peripheral and central thermal receptive stimulation. That is to say both the central and the peripheral thermal receptors of the skin get stimulated. Once they are stimulated, this results in hypothalamic center getting stimulated. The preoptic and the anterior nuclei of the hypothalamus get stimulated in as a result of this thermal receptor stimulation. Once the hypothalamus gets into the picture, what happens is the sympathetic activity gets introduced. So there is an increase in the sympathetic activity. Sympathetic activity results in two things. One, noradrenaline release is caused and two, thyroid hormone levels are raised. So we have got an increased secretion of noradrenaline and we have got an increased level of active thyroid hormones. Both of them together acts on thermogenin. What is thermogenin? Thermogenin is a specific modulator protein in the brown fat. The job thermogenin has been given is to uncouple the beta oxidation of the brown fat. That is to say thermogenin is an uncoupler of the beta oxidation wherein when the free fatty acids released from the brown fat are metabolized, the energy that is generated is not stored by oxidative phosphorylation as ATP but is allowed to directly heat up the blood. So normally when uh, glycogen stores of the body are uh, use, used up, the energy produced is immediately stored as ATP by the mitochondria. This is uncoupled off so that the energy generated can directly heat up the blood. Now, why is a preterm baby vulnerable to hypothermia? A preterm baby will start to lose heat at around 0.3 to 1 degree centigrade per minute. The skin of a preterm baby is poorly keratinized stratum corneum and the, which is 15 times more permeable. The body surface area to weight ratio is very high in a preterm. The preterm babies tend to lie extended, increasing the exposed skin. And the non-shivering thermogenesis, although possible, is less because the brown fat is less, thermogenin is less and the thyroid hormone reserve is less. Furthermore, a preterm baby has no glycogen stores and the respiratory distress in a preterm limits the oxygen consumption. So what is thermoneutrality? This is a new, this is a concept that we need to actually absorb. Thermoneutrality is the temperature range wherein a baby can maintain its body temperature as normal at a minimal basal metabolic rate. What this really means is just one thing. A baby is not having to spend energy either to increase its core temperature or decrease its core temperature. Otherwise, the baby, that is to say, baby is comfortable in that temperature range. This thermoneutrality zone, the zone of thermoneutrality will vary with the gestation and the weight of the baby. We have several nomograms for that. For example, in a 30 weeker, if naked, you are looking at 34 to 35 degrees centigrade, 34 to 35, and if clothed, 28 to 30. In a term baby, 32 to 33.5 if naked, and 24 to 27 if clothed. So why is this thermoneutrality so vital? Thermoneutrality, if you are thermoneutral, 
all the calories that are generated in your body can be diverted to growth and development not having to waste any calorie on thermoregulation so these babies will actually grow far better and will develop far better that is why thermo neutrality is the key element now how do we assess this thermo neutrality you can actually check it in various ways touch method wherein warm hands and feet this is what all of us know and we tend to do instinctively even if we are not in this field at all if you hold touch the baby's hands and feet and they are both warm the baby is thermo neutral if the tummy is warm and the abdomen is warm but the hands and feet are cold the baby is cold stressed that is mildly hypothermic if the baby is cold all over baby is severely hypothermic this is the touch method now we have the digital thermometer which we, we generally tend to use the roof of a dry axilla now thermistor otherwise the temperature probe it is you it is usually used in the right upper abdomen when prone and the flank when supine rectal temperature rectal temperature is important only in certain situations especially when hypothermia is suspected we do need to know the core temperature and rectal temperature most importantly is is not dependent on either the gestational age or the weight of the baby this is something we must remember rectal temperature is not dependent on whether it's a preterm or a term baby or what the weight of the baby is now while we record the rectal temperature you need to insert the thermometer about 3 cm in a term baby and 2 in a preterm it will be down and backwardly inclined at around 30 degree inclination what is the normal range at birth the rectal temperature will be 37.8 degree centigrade which is 1 degree warmer than the mother and thereafter it is 36.5 to 37.5 signs and symptoms of hypothermia those that are secondary to the attempts to combat heat loss that that is when the baby attempts to create or produce heat in that attempt what are the changes that happen which will result in signs and symptoms say for example when there is an increase oxygen consumption in an attempt to increase the heat produced hypoxia results depletion of glycogen stores hypoglycemia results hypoxia with vasoconstriction results in metabolic acidosis hypoxia with acidosis results in pulmonary hypertension now the second group are all secondary to the hypothermia per se hypothermia causes bradycardia hypothermia causes hypotension shock intraventricular hemorrhage disseminated intravascular coagulation finally death so what are the signs and symptoms the early symptoms and signs are when the compensation is ongoing that is an irritable unsettled baby who looks pale extremities are cold there is acrocyanosis there is tachypnea now the later symptoms are where the compensation has started to fail so when the baby is starting in that decompensation you see things like apnea bradycardia hypotonia poor suck weak cry vomiting or increased gastric residuals and the late and the extended stage of hypothermia you have the hypoglycemia metabolic acidosis hypoxia coagulopathy acute kidney injury and the list goes on and on so now we know that hypothermia can present as anything that hypothermia has multiple avatars we should be aware of them whatever we just described is exactly what a baby with sepsis will manifest as i'm sure all of you will agree with me when i say that the close differential here would be systemic sepsis now how do we prevent hypothermia be aware of the impact hypothermia has identify the at risk points the delivery room during the transport to nicu in the nicu during procedures or surgery during transport to the room or for investigations in the room so these are the risk points and maintain 
what we know, what we fondly call the warm chain. So what is this warm chain? This is nothing but a sequence of events that are interlinked which together will ensure euthermia. So warm delivery room, 25 to 28 degrees with no draughts, that is no air or wind flowing. Immediate drying with pre-warmed linen, skin to skin contact with mum, breastfeeding as soon as possible, postponement of both bath and weighing even, appropriate clothing and bedding and remember cap as I told you earlier the maximum heat loss is from the baby's head. Mother and baby to be roomed in together in the same bed. Warm transportation. You transport the baby in warmth. So it could be in an incubator, it could be a nice, uh, it could be in a preterm baby, it could be cling wrap or a plastic bag or we can use stuff, you know, these equipments like embrace or even if it is very close by, suppose your labor room and your NIC you are very close by, nice and warm linen, a well wrapped baby in warm linen might suffice. Warm resuscitation. This is important because when you are resuscitating a baby, we tend to forget that the baby is getting cold. Everybody is working on the baby, forgetting that the first vital thing is T, T A B C. So let us not forget the T. And finally, training of not just the personnel but also of the family and raising the level of awareness of hypothermia in the family. So this is the warm chain. So in the labor room, we maintain the room temperature, we dry the baby well, especially the head. We must pre-warm and keep the radiant warmer ready and we should wrap the baby in pre-warmed linen, not cold linen taken out of a cupboard. And then you place the baby in the mother's arms or even her chest. A preterm at, at delivery, remember resuscitate always under the radiant warmer. Wrap the baby in a plastic bag as is seen in this or in cling film. This cling film is the normal food grade cling film that we have. You wrap from neck below and remember you do not dry off the lanigo etc. So no drying, it is actually helps as an insulator and this will prevent evaporative heat loss. And remember a plastic bag or a cling film will allow the radiant warmer to warm the baby. Now in the NICO, we have either the incubator or the radiant warmer. Under the radiant warmer, remember insensible water loss is a reality. We can minimize it using a cling film, cover the head with a close fitting cap, clothe the baby only once the baby is stable and try and bundle all your investigations and procedures reducing the time the baby is left exposed. We will come, come into the details of this later on. Now at during transport, we can wrap the baby well in warm linen. We have exothermic mattresses like the embrace as you can see here. Skin to skin contact which is the good old care, kangaroo mother care. And we have this transport incubators which are most of the time a luxury for you and me. When roomed in with the mother, roomed in does not mean baby and the mother in the same room. They have to be room in the bed together. Encourage kangaroo mother care. Use appropriate covers and teach the mother the touch method we spoke about earlier. How you can touch and decide the temperature. Now, we have tried our best to prevent hypothermia. But the baby has become hypothermic. How do we treat this baby? So treatment of hypothermia, remember prevention is the name of the game. We try as much as possible to prevent it. Now, if it's a mild hypothermia, measures are very practical. Common sense works here. You remove the source of the uh, loss of heat. You know, close the door if it is open, off the fan, wrap the baby nicely. If the baby has not been, cap has not been put, put the cap 
or if you breathe and then hold the baby on to your chest and the skin to skin contact probably is all that is needed so these are the practical measures for mild hypothermia in moderate to severe hypothermia first and foremost we have to document the core temperature that is the rectal temperature and there are two ways to act here the rapid rewarming or the cold rewarming slow rewarming so the warm you warm a baby at around 1 degree centigrade per hour if the baby is stirred and if the core temperature is about 32 degrees so a rapid warming at 1, de 1 degree centigrade per hour is okay if it is a term baby and the core temperature is about 32 whereas if it is a preterm baby a low birth weight baby or a severely hypothermic term baby the warm rewarming should be at around 0.5 degree per hour always remember that during rewarming the skin temperature must not be allowed to be more than 1 degree centigrade warmer than the core temperature what i'm trying to tell you is keep checking the difference between the skin temperature and the rectal temperature the rate of rewarming should be such a way that the difference is less than 1 degree now re rewarming if rapid can result in electrolyte shifts hypoglycemia and hypotension be prepared for all three eventualities and treat them accordingly a word about hyperthermia we have gone on and on about hypothermia but hyperthermia is also here here the temperature is higher than the core temperature of 37.5 which is normal now the usual and the most important cause is environmental causes like over bundling iatrogenic causes where the skin probe is lo uh, become loose or the servo control was set too high it could be dehydration where uh, lactation has not been established and the baby is dehydrated or it can be a uh, dreaded infection causing fever the other explain the others are all the rare causes i just left it here for completion sake like hyperthyroid crisis central causes like Riley Day syndrome and during a prostaglandin E infusion. How do you diagnose hypothermia? You are looking at a baby who is hot. So we need to decide whether this is true fever or whether it is due to environmental causes. If the baby's hands and feet are as hot as the body, it is likely that it is due to environmental causes like over bundling, over uh, heat in the room etc but in true fever you will find that the extremities tend to be cold due to the peripheral vasoconstriction and the abdomen and the face they are hot so treatment is support treat the cause if it is sepsis you have to treat the sepsis of course dehydration you can't regulate dehydration but how do you actually bring down the body temperature you use what is called a water bath water bath you do not use cold water you use water whose temperature is diligently kept just two degrees centigrade lower than the baby's core temperature so if the baby's core temperature is 40 this water bath should be 38 now when the baby's core temperature comes down to 39 water bath will become 37 you get the idea so remember you do not use a cold water bath and ensure hydration as i said earlier so treatment is essentially make sure that you are not missing a true fever and then cool down the baby.